so uh, we already discussed a lot more thing about the deep learning so that is uh, if you people remember the session that is uh, like uh, that is a way uh, for creating any machine learning model or deep learning model first step is data collection then cleaning and pre-processing the data choose the model train the model test the data and some uh, use the tune and uh, improve the model and then run the model and just use the model okay uh, so uh, that is the basic uh, we all already discussed this thing like uh, we already know what is the artificial intelligence uh, what is the machine learning we if you people are aware with the machine learning algorithm some some good machine learning algorithm is like uh, sbm uh, random forest and the, like the exibust uh, this type of algorithm we generally used in machine learning but we already aware with the neural network what is exactly neural network basic term and terminology uh, used in neural network we already discussed and also discuss what is the deep learning and now we are going to discuss a very good architecture convolutional neural network okay uh, so before starting my convolutional neural network uh, let me again recite what is exactly deep learning okay so deep learning means using the neural network with server layer of node between input and output yesterday we discussed about the layer yesterday we discussed how many layer are available in a keras okay we already discussed uh, and we also try to implement uh, with uh, okay uh, jupyter notebook okay so we can say that the uh, the series of layer between input and output do the feature identification and processing okay that is called the main purpose of uh, the uh, hidden layer is uh, the layer between input and output is generally known as a hidden layer so that uh, main purpose of hidden layer is feature identification type of task okay so uh, okay so now uh, we just move on the some people asked to can you tell me the what is the application of uh, deep learning technology so uh, uh, deep learning is everywhere we can say that the internet of uh, thing and cloud if you know the image classification speech recognition language translation language processing and sentiment and this is recommendation so everything deep learning is everything if you go to the medical and biology people use for cancer detection people use for diabetic uh, like uh, grading drug discovery if you go to the uh, like media and entertainment so people use for video uh, uh, captioning and video speech and uh, video search and sometimes real time translation if you go to the security and defense so face de detection we already use video surveillance we already aware with it then if you go to the some other type of thing so like uh, lane tracking like parking penetration de uh, like detection so what I generally i try to say deep learning is everywhere okay we can use in speech recognition we can use for image recognition you can use for recommendation engine we can use for chatbots we can use for a uh, translation uh, but all the deep neural network is not very good are not going to be fit with our our type of application so first of all we are going to be learn what are the uh, neural network uh, deep learning architecture and what architecture is going to be used for in which application okay so uh, let me start with the basic uh, flow uh, if you people uh, as a okay basic flow if you know about the we already know about the deep neural network okay that can be used for two broadly in two category uh, already we discussed in the machine learning also that is some category is called the supervised learning okay and second category uh, category is known as the unsupervised learning so we can show that the dnn deep neural network is also a machine uh, also a learning algorithm so in supervised lear learning also some category is available some some type of uh, data uh, some type of approach is available in that approach one is a like cnn convolutional neural network or there is a recurrent neural network okay and in the recurrent neural network there is another flavor is there sometimes is called the long short term memory and let us another flavor is basically known as a gated recurrent unit gru so these are the some flavor of uh, supervised people use for cnn uh, rnn and if you go for the unsupervised again there is a some uh, different different algorithm is available okay for clustering and all we can say for self organizing map 
and sometimes people are also aware with the auto encoder okay and that algorithm famous algorithm you people know about uh, restricted boltzmann machine so i'll be so uh, that is a basic uh, thing like a deep uh, deep learning architecture is look like that deep learning is also used for supervised unsupervised uh, okay there is a supervised some supervised algorithm cnn rnn is there some unsupervised algorithm is there self organized map and auto encoder is there these are this is the over, uh, little over overview okay so uh, okay so but again uh, if you go and discuss uh, some something so this is a uh, this is a little a deep learning models deep learning architecture is available recurrent neural network is there uh, lstm is there gru is there bidirectional rn is there rn encoder is there convolutional neural network a lot of flavor of convolutional neural network is there lxnet is there vcg net is there google net is there restnet is there and lot of flavors also available talk about the restnet 50 restnet 101 restnet 132 lot of uh, flavor of a flavor is available for this type of architecture then deep belief network is there stack auto encoder is there so this is the basically deep learning model and depend upon the uh, and it is not like that uh, like a convolutional neural network and recurrent neural network is both used for same type of application so i are already told there is a lot of application i mean so deep learning is everywhere it can be used for speech recognition it, it can be used for video analysis it can be used for uh, text analysis so everywhere deep learning is everywhere okay so we need to understand uh, what is exactly uh, like uh, this uh, this architecture uh, when this architecture is going to be used okay so uh, if you talk about the rn that is called the recurrent neural network it is a mostly uh, used for speech and hand written recognition so if you want to use speech recognition or hand written uh, recognition so we can go for the uh, this thing uh, go for the recurrent neural network and if you go for the lstm that is okay it is very uh, good for sequence to sequence levering uh, that is called the basic that is a very uh, very very powerful and very useful for nlp type of task natural language processing type of task and uh, uh, sometimes speech recognition type of task sometimes drug, drug, uh, like gesture recognition type of thing okay if you talk about the cnn convolutional neural network that is excellent for image recognition video analysis okay uh if you go for the dbn deep belief neural network it can use for very good for information retrieval and again uh, sometime used for natural language understanding nlu okay type of thing then people use this type of thing okay and again uh, uh, like uh, okay so these are the some uh, some uh, example like that if you take like that so these are the some deep learning architecture is there okay convolutional neural network is there and these are the use artificial neural network is used for pattern recognition cnn used for image uh, processing rn used for speech recognition uh, like uh, deep neural network uh, are like used for acoustic model okay and dbn used for uh, like some type of medical diagnosis so our okay so our goal is that to understand what is exactly cnn we are going to be use a cnn because every time people are uh, try to image processing image detection like object detection face recognition in that particular case uh, we are going to be uh, these uh, this cnn is a very useful and there is a lot of flavor available uh, there is a lot of flavor already available for cnn we already discussed like bgg net is there uh, rest net is there okay like nowadays mobile net is there tens net is there a lot of uh, cnn uh, uh, like uh, cnn uh, architecture is available okay so uh, now we are, uh, our task is to understand what is a cnn and how we can implement uh, implement that uh, cnn in real life okay so in okay so before uh, understanding this uh, we already know some neural network building a neural network are made of the smaller modules are building block okay uh, we already know what is a bit already know what is the neurons identity know what is the identity layer means linear layer non linearity we did the uh, activation function we already know some uh, architecture recurrent neural network uh, okay and lstm so uh, these are the some basic building block okay and i think we already discussed okay so uh, uh, anyone can you tell me uh, you people are identify this picture who they are anyone sakshi manish okay
Okay, so I think if you people search about the DNN, if you people search about the CNN, if you people search about the artificial neural network, these uh, two people are pioneer. These two people are uh, pioneer in the, okay. So I think, uh, uh, okay, so anyone, I think uh, you, okay, you go and check it. These are the two people, very famous people in the field of uh, deep learning and uh, deep neural network and all. So first one is basically he is, uh, Okay, so basically he is Jan Lipion, and that is a basically very famous for uh, machine learning, computer vision, and all. And uh, and uh, these introduce uh, the neural network and deep neural network. Okay, this is the computer scientist, and he is start working in the Facebook and um, a variety of places. Okay, he is a chief AI scientist at the Facebook. Okay, so he and uh, these two people, these two people introduce. These two people introduced that is a Yusun uh, Banjo, that is also the computer scientist. Okay, these two people, uh, with the help of these two people, we uh, uh, know about uh, the deep learning and all. And they, uh, okay, so that is in, 19, uh, in 1995, these two people introduced the concept of convolutional neural network. Okay, uh, convolutional neural network. Okay, and uh, uh, okay, now the Jan Likun is the director of Facebook AI research group and is the pioneer of the convolutional neural network. He built the first convolutional uh, neural network in 1998 and the name of the first uh, uh, neural network was Linet. Linet. The name of the first uh, neural network was Linet. After that there is AlexNet is there, after that the ResNet is there, a lot of uh, arch uh, CNN architecture is already available. Okay, so these are the these two people these two people okay the concept of the, the convolutional neural network is given by them okay so if we are going to be okay so every time you people uh, you might see in these two faces okay so now uh, we are going to be start what is exactly cnn what is exactly convolutional neural network and how we can implement that convolutional neural network okay uh, that is a that session is very important. Uh, I'm going to be taking at least two to three classes for describing complete CNN and with implementation with the uh, live projects. Okay, uh, as of now, uh, uh, we already discussed about the uh, how to use the uh, like pandas, numpy, and keras to uh, predict something. Okay, yesterday we implemented. So you just, uh, I just share a lot of data. So you can just search one data and just try to implement a classification algorithm. And if you find any difficulty, we will discuss in, uh, in any cl class, okay? So, so exactly, what is exactly convolutional neural network? Okay, so I just mentioned here, uh, okay, a convolutional neural network is a feed forward neural network that is generally used to analyze with images by processing a data with a grid-like topology. Okay, and sometimes we also uh, pronounce this that is a convolute, that is a convolutional neural network. Uh, and the convolutional neural network is very useful for image processing and the computer vision, uh, like in the field of computer vision. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, we already, uh, we are like, uh, we, are we are going to discuss about image and image processing, video processing. So let's uh, understand what is exactly image, uh, okay. So if you try to find the, uh, you try to check the image, so the, the computer is going to be understand that uh, image in the matrix format. So uh, if there is a two type of, there is, a, uh, there is a basically two type of image that is a gray image. You can say that the, uh, there is a gray image. So there is a no like, uh, okay. The gray image, there is a no color in that image. Uh, the value is ranging from zero to uh, like zero to two five five. So gray image, we can say that uh, that is the like uh, gray image. Okay. And sometimes that gray image is also called the one channel image. And that is called the true image. The true image is a RGB image. Sometimes it's called the RGB image. It contains the three components, R component, G component, and D component, blue component. And every RGB component uh, having some uh, pixel span. And the pixels value ranging from 0 to 255. So uh, we generally represent N cross M cross L, as C. So C is a basically channel. So if there is an image is a 300 uh, height and 400 uh, width, let us call three. So that is uh, the three is RGB image. So we can find the 300 into these are the total number of pixels. Okay. 
so uh, okay so look like that that is a color uh, that is a, every uh, means a channel channel is basically represent uh, it's a it's a black and white it's a gray or it is a color image and the height and pick these these are uh, like this is a representation of the like image okay so if every time we are going to be used uh, uh, this rgb image so we need to understand what is the rgb image what is the pixels and how you can calculate the pixels and all so now the question is that why uh, like normal or conventional neural network is not uh, efficient for uh, uh, this image processing type of task why it's uh, going to be uh, not much uh, useful okay so uh, i just uh, i try to for that purpose i just try to discuss uh, basically this thing okay so uh, basic first of all uh, we need to understand this is a basic uh, thing so uh, we can say that there is a, some some image exist uh, sometime uh, there is a flavor of the image is sometime called the gray image uh, sometime is called the rgb image sometime called the hsv image okay sometime is known as a c m y k etc these are the some uh, image so i am going to be discuss this rgb image first okay so uh, okay so let us understand uh, why this uh, image uh, like uh, this uh, uh, why uh, this uh, convolutional neural network is not uh, like uh, very efficient uh, for uh, finding uh, for for uh, image processing task okay so okay so let us discuss why this is not uh, useful first then we, you people understand uh, exactly the advantage of convolutional neural network okay so uh, let us take a, let us take a basic example let us take a very basic example okay any doubt if any doubt you can please ask Okay, so so okay, so we can start. I think okay. So you don't just if you people ask any question, uh, okay, uh, just wait. If you already aware this term and terminology, we can move on. Okay, so I think uh, everything is fine here. So let us take. Uh, I have some uh, like let us take. I have uh, uh, some pixels. I have some image. the image is basically the size of image is 64 cross 64 and i consider that is a single channel try to understand so i consider we have a 64 cross 64 cross one image okay and every value ranging from 0 to 255 because that is a gray image so every value is uh, y okay so generally this is called the row that is column and sometimes this is called the channels okay height width and all so uh, if you want if you try to create the neural network simple a uh, convolution uh, like feed forward neural network so uh, we already know okay already know the first layer our node is going to be uh, going to be depend upon uh, going to be decide on the basis of uh, uh, the uh, feature and if you dis if you understand here so 60 cross 64 cross 64 cross one is a pixels value and every pixel pixels is going to be behave like a feature so if you are going to be trained a normal or convolutional neural network so it would be going to be give 4096 node let us try to understand so we required 4096 node okay let us let us uh, let us uh, let us uh, take i am going to be uh, first for, that is the first layer i am going to be create the first hidden layer and i am going to be consider the hidden layer is with a 500 node okay so uh, since all the node is a subsequently layer are fully connected i'm talking about the dense layer we we required 4096 into 500 weight between input and first hidden layer What, how much it's going to be happen 2048000 uh, okay i remember this value don't worry so uh, if you uh, if you check Uh, so for the how complex problem is going to going going 
means we usually need a multiple hidden layer in our uh, feed forward neural network as uh, okay as a simple feed forward neural, neural network may not be able to learn model mapping the input to the output in the training data okay having multiple uh, uh, hidden layer okay uh, compound the problem of having many weight in our feed forward neural network in single term let us consider i am going to be play with color image so that is going to be a triple the pixels is going to be triple like uh, th that is going to be 12 12 double 8 and then 12 12 double 8 is going to be multiplied with this and now it becomes 6 1 4 4 0 0 0 try to understand try to understand so if i take a only 64 cross 64 image and i just take a 500 hid, uh, hidden layer i consider one hidden layer thus weight is going to be uh, this 6144 uh, this this uh, this means means F means your neural network your model is going to be take a lot of computation computation power so it is clear that feed forward neural network cannot be scale to handle large images okay means the feed forward neural network is not able to handle large images and i'm talking about the single image maybe that contain the lack of image so we need a lot of uh, weight we need need to lot of model parameter uh, model like uh, uh, tunable parameter uh, i'm talking about the weight because this uh, the first layer is going to be calculate this amount of weight okay so in second layer again going to be calculate the lot of weight so uh, that is going to be computationally weak okay and maybe if you start training so it take a uh, um, years for uh, simple calculate all the things so are you able to understand uh, what is a problem uh, what is the problem with a uh, feed forward neural network feed forward neural network is not going to be uh, just uh, it's very computational is uh, like it is it is very uh, uh, it is going to be take a lot of computational power and lot of mathematical operation is going to be happen uh, uh, depend upon the uh, size of image and uh, channel of image okay please so uh, due to uh, for, for uh, so okay so with the help of a convolutional neural network we are going to be handle this situation so what is the first uh, problem with the feed forward neural network feed forward neural network is not good for uh, large image data uh, for uh, large image data if the data uh, image data is very large and uh, size is very uh, size is not uh, size is very like uh, large so it is going to be uh, not work properly okay we need to uh, tune a lot of parameter we need to calculate a lot of weight and uh, bias and all okay so we are going to be use convolutional neural network we are going to be use convolutional neural network to solve this problem okay that is a basic problem okay so exactly uh, what is now we are going to be discuss what is exactly convolutional neural network so we can say that the convolutional neural network is uh, uh, a combination of different different layers okay let me discuss what is exactly convolutional neural network and we will going to be used okay so if you talk with this uh, if you talk you start talking with this so you need remember a uh, convolutional neural network is basically a four layer architecture it contain convolutional layer it contain pooling layer it contain pooling layer it contain the linear rectifier unity layer and that is a fully connected layer on try to understand that is fully connected layer we can say that that is a feed forward neural network also so we can say that uh, we are going to we are going to be introduce uh, some uh, layer before neural network okay and then after loss layer or we can say the output layer. so that is a layer so generally in uh, neural network convolutional neural network it contain convolutional layer pooling layer relu layer fully connected layer and loss layer generally we talk about the okay now we are going to be discuss what is exactly convolutional layer what is exactly pooling layer okay and if you understand 
that what is the problem with the fully connected layer, uh, like a convolutional neural, neural network, then you people understand why, uh, what is the purpose of convolution. Okay, so now I'm going to be discuss uh, one by one, what is a layer, what is a pooling layer, what is the RUL, uh, and what is a fully connected layer. Okay, so we can say that in single term, what is a convolutional layer? Uh, okay, that is a simple a mathematical convolution we already know. So, uh, let us uh, check one by one. So, we can say that the convolutional layer, the la that layer perform the convolutional operation, creating a server a small picture window to go over the data. Okay, let me just let me clarify all this thing. Relu, you people already know, uh, the Relu is the, it's go, uh, been the non-linearity that is the activation function and that activation function is basically used for a uh, hidden layer. So, uh, RELU layer, it bring a non-linearity to the network and convert all the negative pixel to zero and the output is rectify feature because already discussed uh, that that is a relu okay means if the pixels is less than zero everything is going to be zero otherwise it is going to be rectified so that is called a max okay zero. that is the function is going to be return the zero and all max value Okay, the pooling layer, pooling layer is used for downsampling operation, I'm going to be discussed and fully connected layer, it basically used for classifying the object, uh, okay, that, that's uh, the that, that, other uh, thing. So, if you discuss, so this is the basically architecture of CNN. So, we are going to take the image, the image is going to be passed the convolutional layer and then uh, linear rectifying unit, then pull it and that can be repeat multiple times, that can be repeat multiple times. So basically, what is the purpose? If you single glance, you can say that what is the purpose of this uh, this uh, this purpose? Like a convolutional layer, pooling layer. Uh, okay, the convolutional layer and pooling layer is going to be extract the feature. Okay, it is going to be extract the feature. Okay, uh, how? Uh, okay, and then we, we are trying. Then that is a real neural network. We already know convolutional neural network. The, uh, okay, uh, okay. We add the convolutional layer with the feed forward. Look like that. Look like that. Convolutional layer, pooling layer, convolutional layer, pooling layer, and then fully connected layer, and then output prediction. So that is the basic architecture of CNN. Let us discuss what is the purpose of CNN. What is the purpose of pooling? Uh, okay, and all. So that is uh, we can say that what is the purpose of convolutional plus pooling? That is called the feature extraction. Okay. So we can say that the feature extraction task is going to be automatically handled in the CNN. Okay, and how it's going to be happen, we are going to be discussing. Okay, and how the feature is extraction is going to be happen with the help of gradient boosting and back propagation. Okay, okay, so let us discuss uh, what is exactly convolutional operation. So we can say that the convolution operation, everybody know what is the convolutional operation. Uh, in purely a mathematic term, convolution is a function uh, derived from two signal function, uh, two given function by integrating with the, uh, okay, means simply, uh, it is going to be multiply, it's the multiplication of two signal and we are going to be multiply one signal with other signal and we'll try to find a third, uh, a different signal. And if you talk about uh, this thing, so we already know what is the equation of convolution in the mathematic term, you people already know, F convolution with G, it is going to be integration with the minus infinity to infinity and that is going to be a, a function of F, that is going to be delay version of X minus alpha and dl okay i think you people already aware with this thing okay uh, if you talk about a discrete like discrete term so we can find alpha equal to 0 to n minus 1 and f alpha g into x minus that is i think you people already aware so if you talk about this this is like a convolutional we are trying to multiply two signal and the same, we get the different thing. Okay, so please try to understand. We re we rotate. Let us take this is a first signal, and that is a second signal. So what we try to do, we try to rotate. Uh, uh, we try to rotate f two over f one, and sometime uh, in the neural network term, this f one is basically called the image, and this f two is basically called feature. And sometimes this called filter, sometimes this called the kernel. Okay, so uh, okay, I think you people understand. Okay, what is the basically a basic convolutional operation? 
okay so uh, that is going to be uh, multiply a multiplication of two sigma okay look like that so convolutional is simply a mathematical way to combining two signal okay to form a third signal and we can say that uh, how a convolutional is going to be happen you can see like here okay so if you talk this thing this is the first bigger image and that is a smaller image so how uh, everything is going to be happen this is basically okay so this is basically called the filter let us call the filter is 010001 so every time we are going to be start from here then shift here then shift here if you people know the convolution again look like that so every time we are going to be shift look okay and we'll try to like that let us take this is a image this is a image and that is a kernel r okay so how we are going to be do look like that first we are going to be multiply this complete thing here so first going to be element wise multiplication look like this 1 into 1 plus 0 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 0 into 0 plus 1 into 1 plus 0 into 1 plus 1 into 1 into 0 plus 0 into 0 plus 1 into 1 so that complete thing come here and multiply on and we got got 4 try to understand okay similarly we shift here now the whole thing is going to be multiplied like that again it is going to be shift and whole thing is multiplied like like that again it is going to be multiplied like that okay that it is going to be multiplied like, okay are you able to understand so ultimately that is going to be happen that is going to be create element wise element wise multiplication so can anyone tell can anyone tell what is going to be happen if you see here if the image if this size is 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 so i try to be the longer image 5 cross 5 i just convolve with 3 cross 3 and i get the image feature map is 4 cross 4 so here simply with what is going to be happen with the convolution convolution is just extract the important feature okay and simply the image size is going to be decrease in the next layer so what is the problem with the neural network convolutional neural network uh sorry not feed forward neural network the weight is going to be calculated a uh, very uh, very uh, the number of weight is very large but here if you check here the 4 cr 5 cross 5 uh, the 5 cross 5 matrix is going to be converted into 4 cross 5. okay so we need to remember three thing that is basically called the image sometime called the input image okay that is called the feature detector or uh, 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 like uh, uh, feature detector or kernel or filter and convolved image is called the feature map try to understand so let us take this is a image of cat and if you want to detect something so you this feature is basically the filter what is the purpose of filter filter is try to extract some information and remove unrelevant information so convolution layer is going to be do same thing okay so uh, people are uh, you understand this thing so let, let us try to uh, try to this so you find this image we try to this here and try to this so i think you people understand what is exactly convolutional purpose of convolution look like that okay so look like that we are try to just rotate a filter over complete image and whatever the feature is map we try to extract that feature and remaining is going to be a uh, filter out so what is going to be happen before calculating any weight and bias we can extract the feature we can extract a desired feature okay and and that okay and undesired feature is going to be removed from the uh, neural from the um, uh, from the uh, network okay so if you talk about that if you talk about the convolutional neural network for rgb image it can be happen for three so we need to pass the three feature map one for red one for green and one for blue and it is again going to be calculated like that so here the input layer let us take input layer is a 5 plus 5 matrix 
and uh, with a channel is three and that is RGB mein. The filter is a three cross three cross three matrix. So first each uh, of the kernel is in the filter are applied to three channel. Okay. And then going to be some converted in a single channel. Look like that. So first the all the means here we are mapping the three feature map F1 filter, F2 filter and F3 filter. Okay, and then everything is going to be combined. Look like that. Three cross three can kernel. I think you people understand. If it, okay, so do you understand? Do you understand everyone? Do you understand what is exactly mean of convolutional operation? So what is the purpose of convolution operation? The purpose of convolution operation is multiply the image with some feature okay and extract the feature and remove unrelevant feature okay understand please try to understand if any doubt you can ask and you can pass a multiple feature multiple filter at the same time multiple filter we can apply Okay, let, let us take you want to uh, uh, let us take that is an image and you want to uh, like uh, uh, find some uh, uh, from the image you want to find the cat and dog. Okay, you want to detect the cat and dog. Uh, okay, so you need to put a cat feature and dog feature. So there should be the cat feature map a uh, feature vector and the cat cat feature vector and you can find cat feature map and dog feature. Map. Okay, in real life, you can see uh, there is a lot of object uh, application are available that they can detect the lot of feature at the same time. Okay, but the problem is here. We need to understand some uh, some mathematics. Okay, then we will understand. So let us understand how it's going to be happen and how, what is the problem and what parameter we need to tune with this. Okay, let us uh, understand. Let us take, I have an image, the image having height, let us take H is height and W is, is width and that D is a channel. And it is convolved with a feature vector, the feature vector F, that feature vector is Fn and Fw and that is d so after convolving what is let us take i have a image 8 cross 8 image okay let us take 8 cross 8 1 image and i'm going to be multiplying with 3 cross 3 cross 1 image so can you tell me what should be the desired output what should be the size of feature map try to understand what should be the feature map the feature map is look like it is like that we can uh, calculate like that we can calculate uh, like that. Let us take, let us take height plus height plus. Yeah, simply we can say that uh, I try to eight minus three plus one multiply with eight minus three plus one. So what is going to be happen? Five, uh, okay, 8 minus 3, 5, 6, cross 6. So we can see that, uh, we can uh, relate in the formula, we can use like formula, let us take, uh, that is a input height, input weight, yeah, width, and let us leave about the channel. Simpl simply, filter height into filter weight. How, how you can happen? Input height minus filter height plus 1 multiply by input weight minus filter weight plus 1. Okay, why I discuss this you try to understand. Okay, so uh, uh, if you see that what is the purpose of this, uh, what is the objective of this convolutional operation is extracting the high level feature such as age. Okay. Okay, age uh, and like boundary and all. 
from the input image. Very high a level a thing is going to be detected from the input image. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, uh, why I discuss this after that you people understand. Okay, please. That is an important thing. Otherwise, uh, okay, no use of this. Okay. Okay. So let us uh, do, do like, uh, let us uh, check this. Okay. So let us take what is exactly purpose of a convolutional uh, filter. It is a filtering. So let us take, I have this feature. We can say this is a use image and I want to detect that feature from complete image. So what we need to do? We need to rotate from complete feature. Okay. Try to understand. We need to rotate from complete feature. Try to understand. So whole feature we are going to be rotate and we can find some some look like that. Similarly, again with different feature we are going to be rotate. So we can say that we can extract the sum a feature from complete image. Okay, look like that. Okay, if you want to rotate this thing, so you can rotate separately with all feature you can detect information. So are you able to understand with this 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 thing? So if you talk about what is the purpose of convolution, so convolutional is using a kernel to extract the certain feature from the input image. What is purpose of convolutional layer? The purpose of convolutional layer is just using the kernel. Okay, kernel is nothing. Kernel is a filter. Filter is nothing. The feature. Okay, feature vector. So kernel is using uh, like convolutional layer is using a kernel to extract certain feature from an input image and an, and and a kernel is a matrix which is a, a slide across the image and multiplied with the input such that output output is enhanced in certain uh, desirable manner let us take you want this feature is a word feature you want to detect word from the complete image this is a cat image so you are going to be re rotate complete image uh, com uh, that feature from complete image and at least at the first level we can desire that let us take i have a, i want to detect i have a i have a image image that image having cat and dog and that is the one uh, man is there in the uh, in this image i want to detect the cat so i i am going to be rotate the feature vector for cat so the feature vector of cat is going to be uh, maybe uh, some feature of cat is mapping and some feature of dog is mapping. Okay, so maybe the cat and dog is going to be in next layer, but man is completely irrelevant in this. No feature of man is going to be mapped with cat. So man is going to be removed from that uh, next layer. So the purpose of this feature vector is extracting the some desired feature from the input. Okay, so please, so please, uh, like uh, Manish, Shivam, and Rahul, are you able to understand all this thing? Is it clear? Okay, so now I just explained what is exactly CNN. Uh, a convolutional neural net network is able to successfully capture the spatial, uh, like, and temporal dependency. Okay. It is going to be uh, like find the some uh, dependencies in the image through the application of relevant feature, relevant feature like sorry filter. Okay, uh, the architecture perform a better filtering to the image data set due to the reduction in the number of parameter involved and reusability of the weight. So the same weight is going to be reusable that is called the parameter sharing. And sometime, uh, and what is another advantage? The the data set is going to be removed uh, from the data set uh, from the uh, feature. We are going to be removed a lot of a uh, parameter. Okay. So simply, the role of convolutional neural network is to reduce the image into form uh, into a form which is easier to a process without losing a feature which are critical for getting a good prediction. So we are trying to just 
save for losing the feature and we'll try to re uh, reduce the parameter also. Okay, so sometimes there is a Y convolution. The convolution is used for parameter sharing and sparsity of connections. What is the meaning of parameter sharing? A feature detector such as a vertical edge detector or anything that useful in one part of the image is probably useful for other part of image. Means if you able to detect the boundary, if you are able to detect the edge with a one image, so with the one para, uh, with the uh, one model parameter same model parameter can be used for uh, detecting the uh, boundary or edge with different image so that is called the parameter sharing okay so these are two important thing now for convolutional operation we need to remember these thing filter size most important thing what should be the filter size padding stride dilation and active activation function so as a time of declaring the uh, convolution layer at least we need to know what is all this parameter uh, filter size what should what is exactly padding what is exactly stride what is exactly dilation i'm talking about the convolution layer after the convolutional layer that is the relu layer after RU, relu layer there is a padding okay, uh, sorry that is a like a, a pooling and after pooling uh, there is a fully connected layer so I'm talking about the first layer convolution here. What is the purpose of convolution? The purpose of convolution is using the feature map, a feature vector, our kernel to reduce the parameter and just uh, uh, use the, uh, uh, just uh, share the parameter, whatever we calculated, okay? So in CNN uh, terminology, the three cross three matrix is called filter our kernel on feature detector okay and the matrix formed by sliding the filter over the image and computing the dot product is called convolved feature our activation map our feature map it is important to note that filter act as a feature detector from the input image okay different value of the each uh, filter metric will produce the different feature map from the same input image that is one other challenge okay so now we need to remember uh, this thing what is exactly padding what is exactly depth what is exactly stride okay let us understand first filter size how you can decide the filter size okay how you can decide the filter size or kernel size uh, okay, that is uh, like uh, uh, tedious. Okay, basically we divide the kernel size into two uh, into two categories: a smaller and larger one. Okay, a smaller kernel size consists of one cross one, two cross two, three cross three, and four cross four. If you are using one cross one, two cross two, and three cross three, and four cross four, that is called a smaller kernel size. Where a larger one consists of five cross five, and so on. But we still but we use still, uh, but we use still five cross five five for two D convolution. Okay, so that is a recommendation. That is a like a experience of the people. They are not going to be use uh, the filter more than five cross five. In two thousand twelve, when AlexNet CNN architecture was introduced, it was it, it used eleven cross eleven uh, image size and five cross five like larger kernel size that consumed two to three week in training because if you increase the number of uh, size then filter size then parameter is going to be increased okay be okay because f minus n plus three uh, f minus n plus one okay so the question is that how you can decide what should be the optimum parameter uh, optimum number of uh, fil filter size Okay, so generally one cross one kernel size is only used for dimensionality reduction. That aim to reduce the number of channels. It captures the interaction of input channel in just one pixel of feature map. So uh, one cross one was elim eliminated as the feature extracted will be finally gained and, lo and uh, local to two with no information. That is simply uh, try to extract. If you try to convert RGB image into gray, we can use one cross one 
a kernel that is uh, okay so generally one cross one filter is not going to be used okay remaining two cross two and four cross four are generally not preferable because odd size filters symmetrically divide the previous layer pixel around the output pixels means uh, like uh, if and if symmetry is not present there will be distortion across the layer which happen when we use the even sized kernel so why it's not recommended in the uh, even sized kernel because the symmetricity is going to be like uh, uh, the symmetricity will be not present and it's going to be destroyed okay so remaining 3 cross 3 therefore the 3 cross 3 is optional optimal choice to be followed by uh, all the practitioners okay as of now but still uh, the most experienced part we can just change it so we just try to use 3 cross 3 filter you people understand why we are not going to use uh, 5 cross 5 filter because it's going to be take a lot of time for training a lot of parameter we are going to be tuned and we need to calculate and if you use the 2 cross 2 and 4 cross 4 the even symmetry uh, due to the like uh, 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 it is not going to be like uh, if symmetry is not present it's going to be uh, then uh, distortion is going to be happen okay that is the experience uh, given by uh, the, some researcher who just researched it so the optic generally people ask why only whenever you are going to be use a convolutional layer every time 3 cross 3 filter use that is a, some reason that is the optimum optimum because as of now uh, we, we categorize in two categories okay so okay now i think uh, you people understand why every time we are going to use three cross three filter all uh, uh, like most most of the time please any, if any question please ask any question please Okay, when we are going to be write the code, these, this information must be, uh, you people understand. Why I just write all this system. Okay, now why padding? Because uh, there is something like filter size we know. Now we just move on the padding part. So I think padding is basically, okay, let us take one example. This is an input and that is a filter. Why, uh, do you know? Uh, why I just use 3 cross 3, I just explain everything. That is a way of, okay every time we need to know why we are using this thing. okay that is a three cross three matrix and we just multiply with the input the input size is four cross four and after convolving this thing we get a four minus okay four minus three four minus three plus one multiply by four minus three plus one we get the two cross two matrix that is the advantage or disadvantage first of all both okay so uh, what is going to be happen if you check here we are going to be lose lot of information we are going to be lose lot of information generally a uh, boundary or edges information going to be lose okay we are going to be lose lot of information because the four cross four matrix is going to be convert in two cross two matrix so the edge are like boundary information going to be lose okay so what is exactly padding what is exactly padding okay so what is exactly padding uh, we can say the padding is going to be add extra layer or extra pixel outside the image okay look like that here we can say here i have a n cross n image I am going to be add some pixel outside the image. This image here, here, and here, and here. You can see here. Okay. Now we are going to be multiply. Now we are going to be multiply this thing. Okay. So uh, okay, that is uh, that is called. Then we can find the exact shape is n cross n. Exact shape is n cross n. If you directly multiply, what was the shape? N minus f plus one and he got n minus f plus 1 but after padding we can say we can okay find all this thing okay so what is exactly zero padding uh, padding is a, adding extra pixel outside the image and zero padding is means every pixel's value should be zero look like that 
there is two type of padding zero padding and valid padding valid padding in valid padding nothing is going to be added in zero padding we are going to be add the uh, zero why we are going to be add the zero so the sample size going to be a uh, same okay i think uh, uh, i am able to explain anything if any question please ask okay so the question is that what should be the value of padding how many a p you are going to be add so for that purpose we have a one thing okay that is the important it allow us to use the convolve layer without necessarily shrinking the height and weight okay this is important for building the deeper network since otherwise the height weight would be shrink as we go to the deeper layer means every time the boundary is going to be loose every time the boundary is going to be loose it help us keep more of the information at the border of the image without padding very few value at the next layer would be affected by pixel as the edge of an image so the summary is that uh, we are going to be uh, protect the boundary we are not going to be a uh, string the uh, information okay the image information and another thing is that how we are going to be find this value so let us take why, why how okay so the number of uh, padding should be look like that if filter side is a 3 then we are going to be add 3 minus 2 divided by 2 of integer value okay so 2 my, 3 minus 1 by 2 that is the one one padding is going to be happen 1 0 so where we are okay so that is the thing p should be f minus 1 why i just calculated n minus 2 minus f plus p okay so when n is the uh, where n is the input size uh, shape, p is the padding size and f is the filter size. Shape. So with the help of this, we can find how many padding we will be done. Generally, when we are going to be uh, write the convolutional layer, we need to design. So okay, what should be the padding? So randomly, we are not going to be assigned. We need to the background. Okay. So now the coming to the stride. What is the exactly stride? I think uh, you. What is the basically stride? A stride is like uh, we can say that uh, simply a stride is the number of pixels shift over the input matrix when the stride is one then we move uh, the filter to one pixel at the time when a stride is two then we move uh, the filter to two pixels at the time and so on okay the okay so we can say that figure that is the filter one uh, with a stride one and stride two look like that if you talk about the stride one that is going to be like that feature map is going to be like that okay every time one uh, one rotation is going to be happen one stride is going to be happen if you take a stride two so we are going to be take okay so that is the basically a stride okay fine so uh, we okay so uh, what should be the feature vector after a stride so that is a stride so if we have a pixels uh, a padding 2 if have the padding okay and though so that is going to generally people ask if the filter feature is n cross n and filter is f cross f f cross f stride is s and padding is p so what should be the next image size what should be the uh, feature map size so you need to know this thing and why it's going to be happen i'll try to prove so that is the most important thing theoretical point of view and tomorrow uh, okay 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 uh, tomorrow we'll discuss what is the down sampling uh, what is the pooling what is the relu and a fully connected and i'll take an example before that we need to remember two things uh, with the convolutional point of view input image feature detector and feature map so i think you people understand what is the input image what is the feature detector and what is the feature map and there is a lot of feature detector is available a lot of feature detector is available for if you want to identify uh, identity feature is there if you take the edge detector if you did want to detect the edge uh, that is thing if you try to sharpen the image that is a, this filter 
if you try to blur the image that is a filter if you want to just take a gaussian filter these are the filter we can directly implement okay any question any question i think uh, you and everyone understand what is a convolutional layer okay what is a convolutional neural network convolutional neural network is uh, a, a stack of four uh, four layer first layer is a convolutional layer second is a is a relu layer third is a pooling and after that there is a, a fully connected layer we understand what is the purpose of what is the purpose of fully connected uh, what is the purpose of convolutional layer convolutional it means nothing it is a multiplication of uh, one signal with other signal that uh, okay we are going to be multiply the image with the feature vector okay that is a element wise element uh, multiplication and we take a, a summation and then a strike we again rotate all this thing with the complete image so what is going to be happen uh, it is going to be happen that the relevant feature is going to be passed next layer and unrelevant feature is going to be okay out from the uh, network okay what is the purpose of padding padding uh, if you use the uh, n cross n met, uh, image and f cross s filter maybe the boundary information is going to be string or boundary information is going to be loose so we just add extra layer into the image so okay what is a stride okay stride means sliding what is a sliding window what is the step side for rotating uh, the filter on image okay now the next layer is a relu layer what is exactly the purpose of real uh, non linearity layer okay relu layer is the ele element wise operation applied per pixels and at and it replaces the negative pixels value to uh, value in the feature map by zero okay the purpose of relu is introduce the non linearity okay in our convolved net since most of the real data we would we would want to are convolved to learn okay so that is exactly non linearity means black pixels means negative pixels and white pixel is the positive pixel so if we pass with the relu the black is going to be removed from uh, the uh, network uh, and that is assumption black pixels don't have any information white pixels have information so we just pass the information to the next layer and remove the non information from the circuit okay so tomorrow we are going to be learn the next layer a pooling layer okay fine i think if any problem i have just wait for few minutes you can discuss so tell me the idea is clear why we move from normal convolutional neural network to uh, towards a uh why we opt convolutional neural network over normal fully connected neural network the first thing is first uh, first two feature is that uh what is the advantage of convolutional neural network that is the parameter theory and uh, second one is that anyone okay so parameter theory and we just save a lot of computation i take a example if image size is n cross m cross 3 and let us take deep uh, your layer, uh, load is 500 it need to calculate a lot of parameters okay uh, but in convolutional neural network no parameter is going to be calculated in convolutional layer or pooling layer or relu layer okay everything is going to be filter out and after filtering when we have a desired feature then this desired feature is going to be passed to the fully connected layer and the fully connected layer is going to be calculate the bit and byte okay so tomorrow uh, i think you people understand what is a stride what is the padding okay sometimes people use what is a depth so basically depth is a number of filter used for the convolutional operation 
suppose uh, i already mentioned suppose uh, uh, we can use a number of uh, filter and okay like suppose i use the three different feature so the depth of convolution layer is a three we can say that three feature matrix will one feature for detecting the mobile phone other one is for detecting the man other other one is detecting for uh, something like animals so when we use the <coughs> different type of feature uh, matrix that is called the depth a stride number of pixels by which filter matrix over the input matrix okay and padding it's good to uh, the input matrix with zero around the border okay so we just stop uh, shrinking the information i think uh, uh, that is a good so uh, for convolutional operator operator we need to understand the filter size generally we select three cross three i already discussed why padding we understand what is exactly padding what is the purpose of padding a stride okay we understand a stride uh, what is the purpose of a stride okay depend upon again uh, try to remove the number of uh, pixels value okay and after that we are going to discuss uh, activation function and all okay uh, generally uh, hidden layer we prefer the uh, relu activation function tomorrow we will discuss pooling layer and already we discussed what is exactly fully connected layer. you already know what is a neural network so fully connected is that and after that i try to implement uh, image classifier with the help of data so please okay do, please uh, okay so i think uh, there is any 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 question you can ask